better, more presented, nicer than the other. Would that be a fair comment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them looks like yeah. Karen wrapped it, yeah. the other one looks yeah. like Robbie wrapped it. Would that be fair? Yeah. yeah. Kind of fish supper comes to mind. Would that be a fair comment? Which one would you like underneath your Christmas tree? The fish supper. <laughs> That was the wrong answer, Steve. 
We'll talk later. I'll ask you again. Which one would you like to see underneath Margaret? This one, yeah, the one that's pony wrapped. I would like to see that one under my tree as well. No, it's a bit. It's a wee bit shabby, isn't it? Yes, yeah, a wee bit shabby. So I'm going to leave these two presents here and we'll come back to them later on. Because first of all, I'd like to tell you a story about Tommy. So listen very carefully because there'll be a question at the end, which will not be for Stephen. <laughs> be a question at the end. So listen very carefully as I tell you all about Tommy. Are you sitting comfortably? Yeah. Then I'll begin. Tommy got up one morning and he was just coming down the stairs to get his breakfast when the postie popped something through his letterbox. He ran down the last few steps, bent down and picked up an envelope and it had his name on it. It was quite a shiny envelope, looked very important. Wasn't your bog standard thing, definitely wasn't a bill. He was very excited as he walked through to the kitchen, staring at his envelope. He popped it on the table and he got his breakfast. And as he was eating his breakfast, cornflakes, if you're interested, instead of reading the cornflakes box, he stared at the envelope. He pushed it slightly further back because he didn't want any splashes of milk going on this envelope. It looked very important. After he finished his breakfast, he ran back up the stairs and got ready for school. And he popped the envelope on his bedside table. And he was thinking as he packed his school bag, maybe I should take that with me. I'd quite like to keep it with me. No, but if I put it in my school bag, then my chemistry folder is very large and it might bend it. And I've got all my maths books. No, no, I think best thing to do is to leave it at home. But then he thought, I'd quite like to tell my friends about this envelope. I'd quite like to show them too. But if he did that, what if one of them dropped it and it fell in the mud? Or if it went in a puddle and got wet? No, couldn't do that. No, best thing, Tommy decided he was going to leave his envelope at home beside his bed. Off he went to school. He had quite a good day at school that day, if you're interested. It was quite a good day. And when he got home from school, he ran up the stairs as fast as lightning. Phew, his envelope was still there. It was sitting perfectly beside his bed. That's grand. That night when Tommy went to bed, he stared at his envelope, stroked it even. And just as he was drifting off to sleep, he picked up the envelope and slipped it very carefully underneath his pillow. And off he went to sleep. So, my question for the younger people. Can anybody tell me, what did Tommy not do? What, Alicia? He didn't open his envelope, did he? That was a bit silly, wasn't it? You would think that he would open it, surely. Well, do you know that many of us are like Tommy? Because many of us have a letter that we don't often open. Many of us here have several letters that sit on our bookshelves, or perhaps we're trendy, and we've got a Bible app, but we forget to open it sometimes. Sometimes our letter, our Bible, which is full of letters, full of love letters from God, can sit on our shelf. And sometimes we can be a bit like Tommy, can't we? But this morning we've opened our letter, haven't we? And we've written, John has read from the book of Luke, and we heard all about the shepherds hearing the good news that Jesus has been born. Jesus, this gift of love that was given, and at Christmas especially, 
we remember his birth, don't we? Could you imagine, though, if the shepherds didn't do as John read, if they didn't do this, go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They wouldn't have seen for themselves, would they? They wouldn't have experienced for themselves. They would have been a bit like Tommy. Our shepherds, our first evangelists, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning the birth of Jesus, didn't they? And all who heard it were amazed. Tommy didn't tell his friends about his envelope, did he? He didn't tell them, didn't even open it. We've got a responsibility to share the good news of great joy that we have. Ruth as well, she read about the wise men, didn't she? And what if they hadn't bothered? Because they had to do quite a lot of work, didn't they? They had to travel further than the shepherds. There was an awful lot that they had to do. Could have been a bit too much effort, eh? What if they'd been a bit like Tommy? Well, instead of a shiny star, shiny envelope, but it was a shiny star. The wise men put effort in and they searched to find the Saviour, Jesus. And we too have to put effort in too, don't we? Put effort to find out about this gift of love that came. Opening the envelope and finding out for yourselves about this gift of love that came. Thank you, Don. Now, these gifts that we looked at earlier, this say, uh, shall we one? Do you think we should? No, I think we should open the nice one. Open the nice one. Will we open the nice one first? Yes. 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 Chris will help me, won't you, Chris? You're sitting there nicely. Chris will open the first one. It's beautiful. It's got to be amazing, hasn't it? Because it really looks lovely. Thank you, Chris. See the effort that went into making that look so pretty. It's not how I normally look. <laughs> What's in it, Chris? We're all dying to know. It's a box. Oh, it's a few boxes. There's one, two, three, four boxes. What's in the boxes, Chris? I don't know yet. It's empty. We've got oxygen in that one. <laughs> it's empty. It's empty. Like the world offers, it's empty. There's nothing to speak of. They're empty. What about this one? It looks a bit scabby. It doesn't it look a bit scabby? Jesus came to a manger, didn't he? It's dirty. Anything like my uncle's barn, it would have been smelly. Not very nice to look at. It's heavier. It smells a bit better, doesn't it? it? Smells promising, does it, Chris? What's in it? Sweets. <laughs> Sweets. <laughs> Bible says taste and see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Well done. Thank you. But yeah, see you again. Of course, see that. Tastes good, by the way. <laughs> With nothing to look at, but it's special. Yeah, you chalk that is special, but not nearly as special. Jesus coming. Ruth read earlier, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, 
are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel, King Jesus. But Jesus' coming was not the end of the story, was it? It was only the beginning. Well, the middle. He came with purpose, didn't he? This gift of love came down for you and for me. This gift of love showed how much he loved us when he died for you and for me. When he rose again for you and for me. Paying the price for you and for me so that we can have access to Father God. He's only a prayer away. <coughs> Thank God for this gift. Too wonderful for words. That's been my verse this week. It's too wonderful for words, isn't it? This gift of love that brings hope, joy and peace. It's for you and it's for me. Let's not be like Tommy. No. No. Let's learn from the wise men and from the shepherds who took time to search, took time to listen, and took time to find out for themselves and then tell others about this gift of love. So this Christmas, when you open up your Christmas presents, it doesn't really matter how they're wrapped. But let's remember the greatest gift of all that came. This gift that is too <coughs> wonderful for words. <coughs> Amen. On the first day of Christmas, a true love gave to me. Can you go see the words? A pastor in a waistcoat. On the second day of Christmas, a true love gave to us. To serving tea and a pastor in a waistcoat. On the third day of Christmas, our true love gave to us three cherished ladies. To serving tea and a pastor in a waistcoat. On the fourth day of Christmas, our true love gave to us. Four hugs of welcome. <laughs> Three Jewish ladies, two, two serving tea, and a pastor in a waistcoat. On the fifth day of Christmas, our true love gave to us. And a pastor in a waistcoat. On the sixth day of Christmas, our true love gave to us six purple t-shirts. Three 
cherish ladies to seventeen and a pastor in a waistcoat on the ninth day of Christmas our true love came to us nine welcome packs eight we books all books what can all that seven fifteen envelopes six purple t-shirts five And a pastor in a waistcoat On the tenth day of Christmas Our true love gave to us Ten band members Nine welcome packs Eight bookstall books Six purple teachers Five yes. Four cups of welcome Three cherished ladies to seventeen and a pastor in a waistcoat On the eleventh day of Christmas Our true love came to us They're still in the box! Oh. <laughs> They're still in the box! <laughs> And a pastor in a waistcoat On the twelfth day of Christmas Our true love gave to us Twelve ICF pens Eleven current cards Some members Three welcome packs Eight bookstall books Six gifted animals Six purple t-shirts Five worst Ladies, two seventy, and a pastor in a waistcoat.